think a lot of other traders on Twitter would like to hear how you uh, you, you successfully use this tool to to get past uh, the couple thousand that some other traders just kind of get get stuck at. I mean, Twitter as a platform, like you said, allows everybody to to play on the same level. So people that couldn't just show their ability before now they can but at the same time novice traders can be posting every trade or every paper trade and seem like a pro for a couple of days well how, I think, how do you how, how do you stand out from that and and take out the ten thousand the fifteen thousand mark i you know I, I i don't know how it happened we just you know we were just ourselves i mean i told my team i said guys be straightforward we've been at it 12 years do what, you, what you're good at. You find something interesting for me to post, you better give me some good reason why. Um, we don't want to post too much. Uh, we stay with trades. You know, we get off topic every once in a while. Um, yeah, I'll talk about a Cuban cigar or maybe good music, but there's a reason. You know, I've had a good day. And think when days are, not, days are bad, listen, you can't win every day. I think one of the first things I see from a lot of other people is, some of these other traders, they have no losing days. Can't be. How could that be possible? You know, um, I, I, typically I lose probably one day a week. That's typical. And it'll take me a day or so to struggle to come back. Now, obviously, size is an issue. I realize that. Um, but, uh, you know, when you lose, you lose. You got to understand your standard deviation of returns. Mm-hmm. Learn that at Solomon. And, you know, you need to know when to stop. Sometimes the best thing is stop and go away. And then sit back and see what happened and not repeat it. Um, but you got to be honest with the audience. Uh, you know, my feeling is this. As a flight leader, I got a bunch of people wing to wing next to me. They're flying on my wing. They're next yeah. to me. If I, if, when I go down, I'm taking a lot of people with me. It's a very serious obligation. So you got to be careful what you do, how you use your ammo, when to do it. And, you know, sometimes... Uh, you could be absolutely wrong, but win a trade. Understand that. Realize it. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. God gives you. Don't push your luck. You know, remember George in Seinfeld in the Soup Nazi? Says, Don't push your luck, you're your, your little man. <laughs> yeah, you got to realize it. The market is bigger than all of us combined. Something goes wrong uh, and you still win. I think you got lucky. Recognize it. Move on. Um, in terms of building followership on Twitter, I think... Uh, Best thing is be yourself. Just, just you know, you know, it, it's a hard grind. Move forward. I had no idea what Twitter was uh, on April twelfth of two thousand nine. It was on thirteenth that uh, Brian Shannon called me. Said you gotta get on this thing. You, you, we need somebody with your background. Maybe you can help out. What have you? Yeah, congratulations to Brian, by the way, for passing twenty thousand a little bit before you. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh, yeah, and he, he, he's, he's a good guy, hard worker. And, uh, you know, I think in a day or so, I had 900 people on. So I went back to him and I said, hey, maybe there is something going on here. I got to keep it up. Um, well, remember, the first few thousand is very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's a very slow build. But once you get out there and you, you have RTs working for you, it, 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 it mushrooms. It really goes. For traders that aren't using Twitter yet. And I know you've, you've talked a couple of people into using Twitter lately and, and they're, they're gaining some momentum. Right. Uh, you know, what would you say is the, the benefits that they should, they'll get out of Twitter and why they should come on and, and, and join the community? Well, there's, I use it mainly for, for my inbound. You know, I'm looking for inbounds coming in for my news. I get, now I get news on Twitter almost as fast as anywhere else I could. Mm-hmm. It, it may not be in depth, but at least I get the news, and then you know, a minute or two later, you also get an in-depth analysis from a key source like Bloomberg, yeah. Reuters, what have you. Uh, I think for a trader, it's very critical to have a stream of what the relevant critical news is. Uh, using a like Dow Jones News Service never helped me mm-hmm. because there was too much news. You know, every few seconds you would have a roll up of five, six, seven different articles. What am I going to do with that? Yeah, I, I I need to know key, and especially for index trader, I need the key econ data. I need key uh, uh, sentiment data. I, I need to know uh, breaking news, what have you. 
you know, usually when you trade indices because of the leverage that's involved, uh, you know, you have 100 delta because you're all pretty much, uh, you know, under, unlike options where you're at 50, on the index you have 100 delta plus when you add the leverage, it's a pretty sharp uh, knife you're playing with. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is be able to uh, get to the raw news immediately, make up your mind, and, you know, you have basically three strategies, long, short, flat, and then take a, take. Take action, saying, okay, mm -hmm. given this this event, this is either price action or the news or both, what do I need to do? Yeah. Uh, I think if you are upfront with people, honest, and your trades are working, you're helping out, you don't have to win all of them. You can make 60%, 65%, 70%. I think it's a very decent, noble goal. The key is not number of trades that you win. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it's a total win-to-loss ratio. Right. That's what's right. matter, right? At the end of the day... It's, you, know, you shouldn't be worried about you losing a trade. Uh, if you, when a trade is going against me, I'm trying to shrink that size. When a trade is going my way, I'm trying to expand that size. Yeah. That's how you stay in the game. And the key is really staying in the game. The message I've tried to pass on to people is you can't take your brain with you either. Okay. So, <laughs> so share, yeah. what you know, share what you know and realize that. You need to stay in the game. It's really key. It's key for you to realize that cumulative learning takes time. And so keep your bet size small. Don't bet the far. 1%, 2%. That's all you're going to bet. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't afford that and you want to expand and put a bigger size on, A, understand the risk you're taking, especially ROR. Risk of ruin. You, you could get wiped out. And maybe you could do it for a burst, but that's it. This morning I was in a trade where I immediately started taking some profits. Why? Because I just looked at my accounts and I said, oh, my God. Between four accounts, I had way too much bet size on. Given the market, that's where it is. You know, so you watch an expiration. We're post, past uh, IV time, the first hour. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. you need to do is shrink, take a smaller profit, but take the size out. You know, t t you you got a gain, okay, book it. By the way, keep keep you know create in a way create fresh ammo, mm -hmm. and now you got uh, uh, less money at the table. Your head is clear. You can think. Uh, the other thing I'll tell people about trading is, uh, you know, get into a routine, get your exercise, watch what you're eating, get your rest. I know that's difficult sometimes. I mean, recently I haven't got enough rest I wanted to. But stay with your routine. What's going to make you win is when you stay in your routine. That's one of the lessons I learned from both Lewis and Brad, which is you know two of the greatest traders S&P pits I've ever seen. You got to understand your limitations. I just like I guess as like Clint Eastwood said that man's got to know his limitations. Same thing here. A trader should know his limitations, and one of them is get some rest. Don't push yourself. Okay.